Have you ever imagined that machines could not only see the world but also speak about what they see? We are entering a new era of AI where machines not only understand images but can also generate detailed natural language reports. Welcome to the Lighthouse Project. Today we will introduce how to combine large language models with computer vision and what application scenarios it has. The development of Multimodal Large Language Models, or MLLMS, has evolved in a way that's pretty similar to traditional large language models. A big breakthrough was the Flamingo model in 2022, which was one of the first to explore large-scale in-context learning for vision and language together. Right after that, visual instruction tuning became a key training approach, which basically uses Parameter Efficient Fine Tuning Techniques, or PEFT, to improve the LLM's performance in handling visual tasks. Now every MLLM generally has three main parts. First, a backbone LLM, which acts as the interface for user interactions. Second, visual encoders, which are responsible for processing images. And finally, adapter modules that help translate visual information into language the LLM can understand. Now that we understand the evolution, let's look at some of the key models that have helped shape this field. First up is Clip by OpenAI. Clip is super important because it was one of the first models to map text and images into a shared embedding space. This allows the model to handle both data types seamlessly and its open source, which has paved the way for a lot of innovation. In fact, many current models like Lava use Clip as their image encoder. Speaking of Lava, it's built on the Clip architecture, but takes it to the next level by combining it with a fine-tuned variant of Llama. The great thing is it's also open source and can even be run on a laptop, making it accessible for all kinds of experimentation. Another model worth mentioning is Fuyu from Adept. It stands out because it can handle images of varying resolutions, unlike some models that need fixed resolutions to function properly. And finally, we have some of the top players in the field today. GPT from OpenAI and Gemini from Google. These are state-of-the-art, closed source models, and their performance in handling multimodal tasks is absolutely incredible. You can access them through APIs, which means you can easily integrate their capabilities into your own applications. Now, let's dive a bit deeper into how these multimodal actually work. Understanding their inner workings can be really fascinating because, at the core, it all comes down to something called embeddings. So, what exactly are embeddings? Simply put, there are ways to represent information, whether it's text or images, as vectors in a high-dimensional space. It's like converting everything into a series of numbers that models can easily process. If you've worked with language models before, you're probably familiar with text embeddings. This is when words, phrases, or even whole sentences are mapped into vectors. Think of them like coordinates in a complex space. This allows the model to understand the relationships between words. For example, Words with similar meanings or contexts, like dog and puppy, would have vectors that are close to each other. Now, in the context of MLLMS, this idea of embeddings isn't just for text, it also applies to images. Imagine taking a picture, let's say a picture of a dog. The model would encode that image into a vector in a similar way it does with text. But here's the interesting part. Images that look similar or contain related content end up with vectors that are close to one another in this space. For instance, pictures of different types of dogs might cluster around a similar region in this space, while pictures of cars would be far away. But the real magic of multimodal LMs happens when you align text embeddings and image embeddings into a shared space. That's where models like Clip come into play. Clip which stands for Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training, helps to create a common space where both text and images are represented together. So, both visual and textual information can be embedded in the same space, allowing the model to understand and reason about them simultaneously. Think of it like this. When you input an image and some related text into a multimodal LLM, you're essentially projecting both types of data into a shared, unified space. This means that the model can process an image of a dog, for example, and a sentence like, a dog is playing in the park as part of the same context. Because both the text and the image are represented in a similar form, the model can interpret how they relate to one another. The result is that MLLMS can handle a wide variety of tasks that require both visual and textual understanding. For example, 
if you provide a multimodal LLM with a photo of a crowded street and the sentence, this is a busy market, it can understand and confirm that the visual content matches the text. If you ask the model a question like, how many people are visible in this picture? It can analyze the image and provide a count. To sum up, this ability to align and reason about both text and images together is what makes MLLMs so powerful. Instead of treating visual data and textual data as two separate streams of information, these models bring them together in a way that's meaningful. That means they can understand and respond to complex queries that require context from both text and visual cues, making them incredibly useful for a wide range of applications. All right, now that we know how these models work, let's dive into some of their use cases. And trust me, there are plenty of them. Multimodal LLMs open up a whole range of possibilities across different fields, from enhancing our everyday digital experiences to revolutionizing how businesses operate. Let's break down some of the key applications and why they're so impactful. One of the most popular and widely demonstrated applications is image captioning. This is where the model takes an input image and generates a detailed description of what's going on. Imagine taking a photo of a dog playing fetch in a park and having a model that can accurately describe it as a golden retriever is playing with a ball in a grassy park on a sunny day. The level of detail and context these models can capture is impressive and it almost feels like a human is giving you the description. Image captioning is useful for many real-world applications. For instance, platforms like social media can use it to automatically generate alt text for visually impaired users. Another example is in the e-commerce sector, where retailers can quickly generate product descriptions by simply inputting images of their goods. Beyond that, captioning has applications in photo management systems, where it helps organize and tag large photo libraries without any manual effort. Another very powerful use case is information extraction. This is where the model can parse the visual content to identify specific elements like text, tables, or individual objects and extract meaningful information from them. Let's say you have a document that contains a complex table with data on different sales figures. An MLLM can not only find the relevant numbers but also understand what they represent and extract them in a structured format. Information extraction is particularly useful in contexts like document digitization. Imagine scanning a bunch of invoices or receipts and having the model automatically pull out relevant details like amounts, dates or addresses and then storing that data for accounting purposes. Another application is in legal or compliance fields, where documents like contracts often have dense information and MLLMS can quickly pull out clauses or specific details based on a query. In essence, information extraction bridges the gap between unstructured visual data and structured outputs that are easier to work with. MLLMs also excel in recommendation systems and design. Because they can understand both text and images, they're great at providing visual suggestions. For instance, let's say you're a designer working on a website layout. You could input an image of your current design, and the model could analyze it and provide suggestions to improve the color scheme, layout, or overall aesthetics. In the world of fashion and retail, imagine an application where a user uploads a photo of an outfit they like and the model provides recommendations for similar clothing items or even suggests how to style them. These capabilities make MLLMs an invaluable tool for creative professionals who want to enhance their designs as well as for businesses that want to offer personalized recommendations to their customers. One of the most powerful applications of MLLMs is their ability to provide understanding and interpretation across multimodal content. This comes into play especially in RAG tasks. Let's say you have a collection of slides, diagrams, or visual rich documents. A multimodal LLM can understand these visual contents in context and answer complex questions about them. For example, if you're a business analyst and you have a slide deck with quarterly financial reports, you can ask a multimodal LLM questions like, what were the total sales for Q3 Xiaom? The model would not only be able to find the relevant slide, but also interpret the visual elements like graphs or tables to provide an accurate answer. This interpretive capability is also extremely helpful for use cases like medical image analysis. Imagine a doctor needing to quickly analyze an X-ray or MRI scan. An MLLM could highlight key areas of interest, providing preliminary insights that aid in diagnosis. Or in the realm of education, teachers could use MLLMS to analyze student drawings or diagrams. 
helping to assess their understanding of concepts. Closely related to understanding and interpretation is a specific use case called visual question answering. This is when you input an image and ask the model questions about it. For instance, you might show an image of a street scene and ask, how many cars are there? The model can look at the visual content, identify the relevant elements, and provide a numerical answer. Visual question answering can be applied in security and surveillance, where you could ask questions like, how many people are in this area? Or is there an object left unattended? It's also being explored in customer support scenarios, like helping technicians diagnose issues based on photos of machinery or devices sent in by customers. One particularly powerful use case for multimodal LLMs is automated report generation. Imagine handling complex documents like white papers, business reports, or presentations packed with charts, tables, and visuals. A multimodal LLM can process all these elements, both textual and visual, to produce comprehensive reports or summaries that highlight the most important points. A perfect illustration of this capability is Autorepo, a framework introduced for multimodal LLM-based automated construction reporting. The framework is designed to handle real-world construction data, such as images, drawings, and textual documentation, and transform these into structured, easy-to-read reports. Autorepo uses multimodal LLMS to analyze construction site images, detect progress or issues, and convert this complex, raw information into formal reports. This significantly enhances productivity on construction sites by automating a traditionally time-consuming task and reducing the possibility of human error in reporting. Ultimately, report generation with multimodal LLMs is all about transforming complex multimodal content into structured, meaningful narratives that are easier to digest and quicker to comprehend. It's an essential tool for workflows that rely on rapidly synthesizing information from various visual and textual sources, as demonstrated by frameworks like Autorepo. MLLMs also greatly enhance optical character recognition capabilities. Traditional optical character recognition is limited to recognizing plain text, but with MLLMs, you can recognize and understand text that's embedded in complex backgrounds, like handwriting on a board, stylized fonts, or even text in artistic posters. This allows for better data extraction from images or scanned documents, especially when the text is mixed with visual elements like shapes or patterns. Imagine a student taking a picture of a whiteboard filled with notes. An MLLM could not only transcribe the text, but also understand diagrams and flowcharts drawn on the board, offering a rich summary or even additional context for the notes. Lastly, let's touch on some of the creative applications. Beyond understanding and reasoning about existing visuals, some multimodal LLMs have capabilities for image generation and modification. For example, a model could take a text prompt and generate an image that matches that description, or even modify an existing image based on user instructions, like changing the color of an object in a photo. These creative capabilities are increasingly being used in advertising, content creation, and entertainment. You could, for example, generate visuals for social media campaigns based on text-based themes or create entirely new concepts for product designs from scratch. So how can you get started with these amazing models? Well, there are some great tools and templates available. For instance, you can set up a basic visual search engine right on your laptop using open source models like Lava or Clip. Imagine being able to search your personal photos just by asking a question. Show me all the ice cream pics, and boom, it's right there. If you're looking for something more robust, like analyzing slide decks or documents, you can try out models like GPT or Gemini for rag over visual content. These models work great when you need to analyze complex visuals and get precise answers. To sum it all up, multimodal LLMs are pushing the boundaries of what's possible in AI. Whether it's captioning images, extracting key data, or helping you find exactly what you're looking for, these models are here to change how we interact with visual information, and they're only going to get better from here. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this video helpful and that you're as excited as I am about the future of this technology. If you have any questions or thoughts, drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.